Hello everybody, it's Bourbon Bill, and tonight, a very special episode. A while back, I asked all of you, which ride do you want to see me review first? And people voted for this one and that one. Actually, the winner. The winner was Prideful Goat Six Year. Which is back there. But in the essence of time and to deliver the most valuable content to you lucky viewers. We're doing the whole dang thing in one damn shot. That's right. It's Friday Friday, but it'll probably be a Tuesday or Thursday when you see this because that's when I release videos. So hit the like, comment, subscribe button. We are also started a Patreon now, so if you'd like to support that way, go ahead. The link is below. So we're going to be a little quick here because we got a lot to get through and a lot of good information for you folks. So let's dive in. First up in our glass is Hughes, a Bell of Bedford Pure Rye. And you might say... Is that from the 1950s? Close. It is an old label and it does look old timey, if you will. Uh, but this this is a new bottle here in 2023. Well, actually, this one may have come out in 2022, but whatever. It, newer bottle that you can find. This one was picked up at my favorite, Drug City, in Baltimore, Maryland. Just a fantastic store. If you've never been, you should really check it out. This sucker here, though, is 110.8 proof. Compute, compute, 55.40% alcohol by volume. So, oh, nice proof. Single barrel. Now we go here on the side label, which is really where the real magic occurs. Age 10 years. 10-year-old rye. Uh, price on this bad boy was $99.99. Or a hundred doll hairs. Exactly at that magical ten dollars a year mark. And ten year old rye is not typical to come by. So at, you know, at a high proof. So that's fine for us. It says barrel proof. That is barrel proof, by the way. 110 non-chill filtered. Barrel char number four. Just how we like it. Mash bill is a 95.5. So 95% rye, 5% malted barley. And you might have guessed from that mash bill, it is distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana at MGP. Although this label is uh, Hughes Brothers in Philadelphia, PA, and Bell of Bedford. Bedford is PA County. So, oddly enough, not available in the state of PA. Like, PA, get your head out of your ass. Here's a PA label that you don't even sell in PA. What a bunch of nuts. All right. Without further ado, let's give you some tasting notes of this barrel proof 10 year 95.5 rye. Color, nice amber, nice amber. Let's give it a nosing. Oh man, does that smell good. I mean, there's just a nice layer of oak. The rye spice in here comes in a little bit of orangey citrusy. It, it is a little darker orange, though, if you will. It's not a very light fruity nose. It's, it's all barrel char. A lot, a lot of maple on this one as well. It's like that maple caramel barrel char type of rye with a lot of rye spice and then a little bit of darker fruit notes there. Mmm, smells wonderful. Let's take a sip. Oh, man, is that delicious. Mmm. So actually on the palate, it is a little sharp. It does have some citrus zing to it, if you will. There is a lot of oak, that maple notes in there. So it's kind of like a sharp rye spice peppercorn note in there and then mixed with like a nice oak char and maple. I would like to see the sharpness dialed back a little bit because it's, it's so sharp it almost comes to a bitterness. But doesn't quite reach it. Um, it's still going to receive an A rating from Bourbon Bill tonight. So if you want an older age rye with his older age rye notes from, from MGP, this is definitely a good option for you at 100 bucks, I don't think they're really overcharging because it is a 10-year-old barrel proof. 
rye. I wouldn't pay more than 100 though. 100 would be my cutoff for this. Uh, it is delicious and will likely compete in my top 10 ryes of the year. Next up on the block is the one you voted for the most. Prideful Goat Six Year Cast Strength Rye Whiskey. Thank you, Randy from Bourbon Real Talk. So if you, have, if you don't watch his channel, go watch it. He's much larger than me. Um, if you're coming to this channel from that channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, either way though, very similar here. This is a 95.5 rye from MGP. Go figure. Six years old. Also barrel proof. This one is 118.4 proof. Compute, compute, 59.2% alcohol by volume. This is batch number quattro or four for those that care and follow that. And I gotta say I heard a lot of good things about this bottle. It happened to be in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico for work and I picked it up for like 65 doll hairs. I think I'm gonna start peeling these as like 60 but you know they range from 60 to 70 somewhere in there. Um, but you know a decent price. Put this in the red here. So, how does six-year cash strength MGP compare to that 10 that we just tried? Let's give it a sniff. Well, the oak and char notes are kind of missing. Um, this does come across as more, way more caramel, though, I will say. It's very caramely. There is the rye spice there. But it's missing kind of the sharpness, and it's missing the oak and char note that was in the 10-year. Let's take a sip. Man. Man, is that good. Um, so, way sweeter. Whereas the hues was a little bit sharp and oaky, this is, there's fruits on the palate here. Way sweeter. I mean, we're like, whew. Okay. Um, it's caramel, some stone fruits, a little bit of rye spice. Not sharp at all. Very mellow. Finishes a tad short, and it's not overly complicated. It's quite an enjoyable sip, but it's not waves and waves of different flavors. It doesn't blow me away with how fantastic it is. I think for 65 bucks, it's a great value. Uh, rating from Bourbon Bill is going to receive an A rating from Bourbon Bill as well tonight. It is a buy if you can find it and you're looking for something with that flavor profile and that age rye. Now... You might say to yourself, okay, Bourbon Bill, what will we compare to those two MGP ryes, you know, 65, 100? Well, you know, what will we compare to those two specifically? How about this? Sagamore Spirits, eight-year-old rye, coming in at 111.4 proof. Compute, compute, 55.7% alcohol by volume. This is batch 2A. Guaranteed this is a hitter. This is MGP as well. But from Sagamore Spirits. Um, their blend is different. They blend 95.5 with like a 52% rye. Together. Two different barrels. Boom. Dump them in. And that's the blend they use. Ends up about 80% rye. So I'm put that here in the Gold Champions Glen. Price on this bad boy is like 75, 80 bucks in that range um so in that ten dollar a year range again so we have like six eight ten which is the best all right here's the sagamore eight year oh man what a hitter oh man it's got vanilla tons of caramel there's a fight here between the oak and the fruit if i had to pick one it smells closer to the prideful goat than it does the bell of bedford Let's take a sip. Heaven help me, that's delicious. Wow. That's probably the winner. Um, it blends the best of both worlds. It adds the oak. It adds the fruit from the sixth year. It is sweeter and smoother. It's not sharp like the Bella Bedford. Carries more complexity than either. Yeah, the second or eight year wins there for sure. Um... But it's not, it's not world's better. You know, it's just a little bit better. You got those other offerings that are great choices if you're looking for um, a higher age rye. Or you want, you know, a little bit younger rye, a little bit cheaper. Up to you. Now it's time to break out a little 
finished gem, if you will. The newest release from Sagamore Spirits, Vino de Naranja. Cask finish. Rye whiskey from Sagamore Spirits. So, very interesting bottle here. Uh, the first Vino de Naranja that Sagamore has ever done. So this is batch 1A, for those that care. This was actually released first and foremost at Mash and Journey Summer Jam a few weeks back. So shout out to Jason from the Mash and Drum and Scott from My Bourbon Journey. They put on an excellent event. And this was part of the gift bag if, if you attended and got a ticket. Um, I believe Sagamore does have some of this, though, um, available to buy in their store. And, and I don't know if it's really going to be distributed out. I have no clue. But most of it was available at that meeting. But I think there is some of these for you to buy. And this bottle was signed here by Jason and Scott down below. Kind of cool, right? Um, now, I love the sticker. You know, Dusty Dan helped pick this. 21090. So a lot of people went into, pick, went into this pick. Really cool. What's not cool, though, is that this fun tater sticker hides the facts on this bad boy. So we do get that it is 112.6 proof. Compute, compute, 56.3%. Alcohol by volume. So that's kind of cool. But then, like all the other good facts are hidden. So, I did look them up just for you. Okay, this is a five-year-old straight rye whiskey that spent two years and nine months in Vino de Naranja casks. So this is a seven-year, nine-month. Um, it says... A bouquet of citrus zest, grilled peaches, and orange marmalade. One of a kind selection. So there you go. Let's get into it. So you might be familiar with Vino de Naranja finishes in Penelope Valencia. That would be the same thing. Although I've had Penelope Valencia. It's decent. Nowhere near this good, so throw that out the window. All right, let's give it a nosing here. Golly, I just get a wall of orange, baby. So there's like caramel maple orange bacon. That's kind of what I get on this. It smells very viscous on the nose. Oh. I mean, I get, it is wonderful. It is wonderful. I, man, you know, I, I tried a Starlight Vino de Naranja. Spit it out. Poured the bottle down the drain. Terrible. Terrible. This is so good on the nose. So don't be turned off if you've had poor Vino de Naranja finishes before. This is not one of them. Let's take a sip. Good Lord. Oh, Wow. One of the thickest, thickest Sagamores I've had. She is a juicy gal. Um, it's all vanilla, caramel, maple, and orange. And it is delicious. The orange is not overpowering. It's like a very light orange. You can, you can smell it a little bit and you can taste a little bit, but it is not overpowering in any way. It doesn't taste artificial. One of the best finishes of Vino de Naranja I've ever experienced. Well done, Sagamore. A++++ rating. Absolute buy. Probably a backup from Bourbon Bill. Typically, their finished ones aren't even that high proof. I mean, that's basically their cast strength. Now, that brings us to probably one of the more interesting options tonight. And our last bottle to review. Corbin and Cash. Merked Rye Barrel Proof Single Barrel. So look, I've heard a lot of good things about Corbin Cash. People raving, oh, it's so good. You got to try it. It's that Merked Rye or Merced Rye. I don't know how to say it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Some oddball rye that grows well in the horrible state of California. So I'm sorry that these people have to live there. But uh, they make the best they can and they produce a good whiskey. So I guess they make the best of it if you're forced to live there. But this comes out of California, Corbin and Cash, uh, David Salza, Master Distiller. Look at that color, folks. It's a hell of a color. I like that quite a bit. This one is 
and 29 proof. Compute, compute, 64.5% alcohol by volume. Hot damn, that's a high proof rye. Barrel number 102 picked by J. West from R. Bourbon. So this is an R. Bourbon pick here. They do make one called Corbin Cash 1917, which is their standard barrel proof offering of their Merced or Merced rye, if you will. Um, this just happens to be a single barrel store pick, so probably better, you know. Uh, this one says age seven years, but in the R. Bourbon announcement, this was like seven years, 11 months or something, so almost eight years. They, he just wasn't sure, so they didn't put the eight on to not, you know, they don't, they don't want to be not in compliance. But first off, gorgeous bottle shape. Absolutely dig this bottle. It's fantastic. It's sexy looking, if you will. Look at that uh, metal topper there. Look at that. Intricate details and... It's heavy metal. Thank you. With a black cork. Black synthetic. That is sweet. And it says Corbin Cash Farm and Distillery established 1917. So that's probably why they call their normal one 1917. Go figure. Oh, would you look at that color. So, the highest proof rye of the night by far. Let's give it a whiff. Ooh, and 100% rye, by the way. Hondo P on the rye here. It has like a light whiskey scent to it almost. I mean, it is like vanilla creme brulee on the nose. Sea salt caramel, if you will. It's got an interesting nose that I don't think I've smelled in any rye before. Uh, but again, I don't have any 100% rye, so that could be it. Wow. This kind of smells like Old Carter American, batch 9 and 10. It's just got like a very creamy caramel, vanilla note. Let's take a sip. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's delicious. We, we go on a roller coaster of flavors there. Starts out a little farmy, earthy, if you will, and then just boom, we're into like dates, prunes, raisin. There's a real dark note in the end. It's almost like, kind of reminds me a little bit on the finish of the Kings County, New York Distillery uh, Barrel Proof. Just a very dark flavor on the back end of the palate and through the finish. Up front is a, is a dark, earthy type rye. Very different, but very delicious. So in all honesty, it's very good. Price on this was like, I want to say 80 something like that. Not bad. It was about $10 a year um, for the price. Fine by me. Uh, the only 100% rye I own. So I like that quite a bit. If you were on the fence about it and you liked everything else tonight, I think you're still going to like this. It is different. Just note that. But I think it's very good. A-plus rating from Bourbon Bill. So, I hope you like what you saw tonight. Please like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Thanks. Have a good evening, everybody.